Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi everyone, David Aragona here taking a look at one of several graded stakes races on Saturday at Aqueduct. This one is a race 10, the grade 3 Gazelle, going a mile and an eighth on the main track for the three-year-old Phillies. This is a qualifying prep for the Kentucky Oaks. The winner of this race likely to be one of the choices in the Kentucky Oaks in four weeks time got eight Phillies signed on to compete in this race and the likely strong favorite is going to be the number five venti valentine i pegged her at seven to five on the morning line she's coming off an impressive victory in the busher stakes last month at aqueduct so she's got that experience over the track but she's facing some horses in here who are up and comers ones that have upside they look like they might be able to handle the distance as we take a look at the field for this race the number six classy edition is the one that i pegged as the second choice on the morning line at five to two odds she's coming out of a good second place finish behind leading kentucky oaks contender kathleen o others in here have a bit more to prove runners like nostalgic morning matcha uh trying this graded stakes race stepping up in class uh others that you might want to consider that we'll get into a little bit later in this preview before we get to the contenders though let's take a look at the time form us pace projector for this race and one thing to note about the running styles of the competitors in this gazelle is that there are a lot of closers in the race, and you kind of see that in that blue bar favors on near the lead characterization in the pace projector. Really not a whole lot of speed signed on in this field. The likely front runner is that long shot, the number two, Greatitude, one of the Todd Pletcher runners in this race. Uh, sorry, should I start that over again? Sorry, my thing froze. That's okay. Um, let's go to the pace projector. Lead into the pace projector again? Yep, whenever you're ready. Okay. Before we get to the main contenders in this race, let's take a look at the Time Form US pace projector because one thing to note about this gazelle and the fillies in this race is that there are a lot of closers and mid pack runners in the field. And you see that in that blue bar. Uh, favors on near the lead characterization on the pace projector. There's really not a whole lot of front running speed in this field. The likely early leader is that number two, Gratitude, long shot going out for Todd Pletcher. Uh, but beyond her, none of the runners in this race have shown the initiative to go to the front end. The number five, Venti Valentine, the likely favored. She does have plenty of tactical speed, though, so she could be positioned right outside of that early leader, potentially get first run on her. You could say similar things about her main rival, the number six classic edition but some others in this race are closers that might be looking to come from a little bit further back in the pack so we'll see how much pace develops in front of them Let's dive into the contenders in this race, starting with that likely favorite, the number five, Venti Valentine. And we'll check out her last out victory in the Busher Stakes when she earned her spot in the Kentucky Oaks. Based on this victory, she already has enough points to get into the starting gate uh, for that first Friday in May. But she's going to come back here and try to make it two for two as a three-year-old. And based on this effort in the Busher, I think she's likely to do so. This was going a one-turn mile, but you really have to like the way she finishes off this race. She runs through the wire like at a distance is not going to be a problem. Her main rival on this day, Radio Days, who took all the money, did not show up. And perhaps that made the busher a slightly softer spot for Venti Valentine. But she still ran a really strong 112 time form US speed figure in victory. That's among the fastest numbers that we've seen from any of the three-year-old fillies on the Kentucky Oaks Trail. So I think that cements her as a major player in that race. She does have to pass this test first. But like I was saying, I don't think the mile and eighth is going to be a big problem because she already handled it last year when she was a very close second in the grade two demoiselle at the beginning of December. She did lose that race by a neck, but she lost to Nest, who's also considered a player heading on towards the Kentucky Oaks. And there's an argument that Venti Valentine was maybe best that day because she had a rival kind of swerve in her path in mid-stretch and she bat on gamely to the wire. She's also got that tactical speed that should allow her to work out the right trip in this gazelle. I just think that she makes a whole lot of sense. She's going to be a pretty short price, but I think that she deserves to be. 
Her main rival is the number six classy edition. Let's take a look at her last race when she was second in the Devona Dale at Gulfstream Park. And the horse that she's finishing second to in this race is pretty good. Uh, Kathleen O, the one that's rallying down the center of the track to victory. She's going to be among the favorites in the Kentucky Oaks in four weeks' time. And classy edition finishes pretty well along the rail to be second to that foe. She had to wait a little bit at the top of the stretch. But all in all, I thought classy edition got a very good trip in this race and just wasn't wasn't quite as good as the winner. She hasn't run quite as fast as her main rival, Venti Valentine. That 100 time Formula Speed figure that she got last time is the best that she's achieved to date. So she's going to have to take another step forward if she's to beat the favorite. She does have to handle the added distance of this race and answer that question. She's never gone beyond the mile that she tried last time. She's never gone two turns before. She was impressive, though, winning the first three starts of her career all against New York Breads and did so with some pretty strong finishes. So that bodes well for her stretching out in distance, but I do think that she was beating some slightly weaker fields as a two-year-old, unlike Venti Valentine, who faced some better horses, even against New York Bread Company. So I'm a little bit more skeptical of Classy Edition, and if she is around that five to two that I have her on the morning line, I think some others might offer slightly better value. Another horse coming out of Gulfstream Park is the number three, Nostalgic. Let's take a look at her last race when she won an optional claiming race back at the beginning of March. That is her in those Godolphin blue silks ranging up alongside the leader at the top of the stretch, the takeover. And she's going to go off to a pretty impressive victory here, going the mile in the 16th distance. I get the sense watching this filly that she wants to run all day. Daughter of Medallia Doro with a big stamina pedigree on the dam side, a dam by Tappet. I just think that she's really going to be suited by this mile and length distance at Aqueduct. She did try this trip in her second start as a two-year-old when she ran in the Demoiselle, finishing behind Venti Valentine. She was fourth that day or as Venti Valentine was second, but I just wonder if her connections were trying too much too soon that day. She just had one start under her belt at that time, but a pretty impressive debut victory. They came back in that graded stakes, and I thought she ran pretty well, just had a little bit too much left to do in the stretch. Since then, she's gotten a bit more experience under her belt. I liked the step forward she took from a speed figure standpoint last time. Let's take a look at another runner that might be closing from towards the back of the pack. That is the number one morning watch. And we'll take a look at her winning the main line stakes at Parks in her last race. Now, she was only beating three rivals on this day, and she was the one to nine favorite. So not the most competitive spot overall, but she does win it the right way, drawing off at the end. And I would say about morning matcha that her best races have been her two turn races. A couple of them have come at Parks. One of them was at Aqueduct going this mile and eighth distance. Since that was two back when she was second in the Busanda. Now, she was beaten two back by Magic Circle, a horse that the favorite today, Venti Valentine, easily trounced when she won the busher. But the thing that I would say about Morning Matcha's performance in the Busanda was that she was a slightly against a track bias. January 23rd was a day at Aqueduct where you really wanted to be on the rail, and Morning Matcha had to come off the inside, making a three wide run for the final half mile of that race. So there's an argument that she was best that day. Still, she's got to take another step forward from a speed figure standpoint to really get on terms with the favorites in this race. And like I was saying, with regard to that pace projector, there is not a lot of speed signed on in this race. So a deep closer like her could be compromised by the lack of pace. Another horse to take a look at that could be closing from towards the back of the pack is the number seven, Divine Huntress. Now, she was pretty disappointing when she made her stakes debut last time out in the grade two Rachel Alexandra at Fairgrounds. She was bet down to six to one that day as a potential upsetter, but she just didn't really have much punch through the lane. Uh, she was slightly encumbered by a horse down the back stretch that uh, went wrong and she had to swerve around that foe, but she got right back into position after that, made a good move coming to the top of the stretch like she might be a factor in the lane and just kind of backed up from there. Jose Ortiz really did not persevere with her through the stretch of that race, but still you would have liked to see her show some more fight or more interest through the lane. I don't know what happened that day. She was impressive winning two back at Parks, getting that 103 time formula speed figure. That number gives her a chance to hit the exotics in this race. I just don't totally trust that Parks form. I wonder if she's kind of a one-hit wonder and I think she's going to have to really get back to that race if she's going to be a factor here and she's coming in off a pretty poor effort so I don't know what to make of Divine Huntress in this race. A horse that could be an even bigger price that I would want to include in exotic wagers is the number four 
Shotgun Hottie. She's actually the horse that was second at a big price to Venti Valentine in that local prep for the Gazelle the Busher last time. And I thought she stayed on well to be second, albeit seven lengths behind the winner, going that one turn mile distance. But Shotgun Hottie, she strikes me as one that's going to relish the added ground here. Uh, she tried two turns twice as a two year old. Those were the best races that she had run in her career. She's been stretching out gradually after starting off her three year old season, going seven furlongs with a victory in the Ruthless two back. I thought she ran well that day with a wide trip, and she improved last time out. I think she's got a right to take another step forward, go in the mile and eighth in this gazelle, and I do think she's going to be a big price here. I've got her at 12th one on the morning line, and she is definitely one that I would want to use underneath, but we can throw my picks for this race. As I was kind of alluding to, I am not trying to beat the favorite in this spot. I do like the number five, Venti Valentine. I do think she's really flying under the radar as a Kentucky Oaks candidate. Based on her last race, I think she's been just as impressive and run just as fast as some horses that have garnered a lot more headlines than she has. She's got to pass this next test in the Gazelle on Saturday, but if she does, she could be a player in the Kentucky Oaks in May. She's the one uh, that I have on top in this race, and I would use those two horses that I think will appreciate the distance at slightly bigger prices the number three nostalgic and the number four shotgun hottie to try to inject some value underneath venti valentine in the gazelle on saturday at aqueduct